Well, hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to worship with us here at St. John Lutheran Church as we celebrate the resurrection and the new life we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our order of worship will be in our hymnal found on page 151. But we'll begin our worship service as we celebrate the new life we have in Christ by rising and facing the back of the church where we have a processional as we begin with our hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, hymn number 457. Please rise. our service found on page 151 of our hymnal. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time we speak the introit together. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You have led in your steadfast love the people with whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, which you have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. To the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty God and the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for this morning comes from Isaiah, the 25th chapter. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed it in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, As to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, 
because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me, whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. This is the word of the Lord. According to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices, and that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb, and they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. seated for our sermon hymn, Christ has arisen, alleluia, hymn number 466. Fearful sting, he 
to destroy our sin forgiving alleluia jesus is living alleluia who knows he's not in the grave he has arisen this world to save jesus redeeming labors are done even the battle with sin is won. Let us give thanks to Him with endless joy. Let fearful sing, He has come to destroy. Our sin forgiven, Alleluia. Jesus is living, Alleluia. has arisen, he sets us free. Alleluia, to him praises be. Jesus is living, let us all sing. He reigns triumphant, heavenly King. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for consideration is our Old Testament reading from Isaiah, the 25th chapter. You may be seated. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Today we celebrate the new life we have in Christ Jesus our Lord who overcame death in the grave with the empty tomb that continues to be empty for our assurance and hope that our faith is not in vain. Holding fast to the certainty we have of eternal life. And on this celebratory day, where we read about the resurrection of our Lord, it might seem odd to hear a sermon on the Old Testament. For we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. We celebrate the victory of Christ, which is why we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Yet perhaps this morning we focus on why we celebrate this most festal day. We take time to understand that in the Old Testament that the scriptures always proclaimed the victory we had in Christ, that this victory can feel more like a party and a festival we have our entire life, rather than just a simple day throughout the year. I don't know about you, but doesn't Easter feel a little early this year? I mean, it feels like this holiday should be in April, yet it's March 31st. And I believe it was just last week we had snow on the ground, even. And it's a little nippy and cool outside this morning. Yet the church, yet March 31st actually is a day the church has commemorated a man whom we know to be Joseph. Joseph, not Jesus' father. Joseph, the man who was Jacob's son. Jacob, one of the patriarchs of the, of the Christian faith. Now, the Lutheran Church does not commemorate them with prayers and bells and whistles, believing these saints intercede before us. Rather, we take time to listen, learn, and reflect on their life of Christian piety. And so, I'd like to share a little this morning about Joseph, someone we've probably remember or heard if we were in Sunday school, that Joseph's story 
can reflect the story of Christ. For his story will show how a feast was prepared for the entire world to come and be saved and delivered from the judgment of a plague or a famine. This Joseph, we know he was the son of Jacob and Rachel, and he was a very beloved son, the favorite son, the first son from the favorite wife of Jacob. We also know Jacob had 12 sons. Those 12 would be the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. And what does favoritism do? Well, it creates jealousy. It can create strife and division. It can create bullying. And so Joseph being the favorite child of Jacob, it created disdain for him. And Joseph didn't add much to this when he started having these dreams by God and he starts sharing these dreams of how all of his brothers one day are going to come and bow down to him. How do you think these brothers are going to feel? There's going to be distrust. They're going to be upset. Hence, these brothers do something that would break their father's heart. They sell this beloved son into slavery that will take him to a foreign land with foreign gods and a foreign world in Egypt. The Bible is very clear that when Joseph goes to Egypt, the Lord was with him, and the Lord found favor with him, that even though he was a slave, his slave owner found favor with him. But during that time, this favor would lead to a false accusation of his slave owner's wife, accusing him of having adultery, which would lend Joseph descending into prison for two years. We're blessed that we get to go to church and hear the word of God, and we have the Bible. Joseph, though, for two years, clings to the promise he had of the, of the promise that he heard from Jacob and his family growing up. That during this enormous trial, Joseph clinged to that promise. For faith endures the greatest trials and hope. But Joseph, on account of the Lord blessing him to reveal dreams, has the opportunity to reveal Pharaoh's dreams. Seven years of surplus food and seven years of famine. And with this, since Joseph, by, God's, by the Holy Spirit and God's grace, Joseph gets permitted to be ruler, second in command to Pharaoh. He helps gather food that will one day help feed his brothers and his father who will journey to Egypt. So in a sense... Joseph prepared a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged well wine refined. That God used Joseph's leadership to feed the nations for a moment that led Jacob and his brothers into Egypt. And 400 years later, God would call them to the promised land. Well, why do I share this story this morning? a story that we've been told in Sunday school. Well, perhaps we miss the similarities with Joseph's story and the story of Jesus. Joseph comes and he's very loved by his father and he receives a multicolored cloak. Jesus, when he's baptized, goes into the water and when he comes out, a dove comes down from heaven And the Father will say, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And we are told that Jesus does his miracles that gets the the religious leaders jealous and and to desire to plot against Jesus' life. Luke gives us the account that after Jesus preaches in Nazareth, they are already wanting to throw him off the cliff. 
And we know the story. Jesus is arrested, tried, suffers death, and descent into his own prison. Yet Jesus goes on his own authority, rather through the injustice of his brothers. Jesus goes on behalf of our sins, so that we might be forgiven. Jesus takes on death, that we might have new life. Hence Joseph, who was liberated by Pharaoh into a new life as a ruler and king, so Christ Jesus rose from the dead as the eternal Son of God, liberated from the, the tomb to give us victory and new life. See, the grave could not hold the Lord Jesus, for he who is eternal cannot be stopped or destroyed by death. He alone swallows death forever. He alone holds the keys to Hades, and he alone has victory and gives you new life in Christ. But this new life can be hard to comprehend, especially in a world where it appears we have more tears of sorrow than tears of joy. When we hear on the news about war, shootings, violence, and this past week, the collapse of the bridge in Baltimore. A bridge special to me because I did my vicarage out in Baltimore and I'd driven over that bridge. When this Easter we do not have family members that have been with us for our entire lives, tears of sorrow only show us why we needed Christ to come and deliver us from our world. Jesus had these words to say, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. The death of a loved one is hard and difficult. The loss of a child is even harder. That is what Jacob felt when his sons came and told him that his favorite son was gone. Tears, though, are not a sign of weakness. They show strength that we do care, that we do love, that we do build these close bonds on this side of heaven. Remember, it's the resurrected Lord who wept, see, hearing of his friend, Lazarus, who had died. We read from the prophet, and he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from the earth, for the Lord has spoken. See, God wipes away our tears. God reminds us that he did not create a world for death. He created a world that would be perfect, where there would be no sin or conflict. It would just be us living in perfect harmony with one another, seeing him as the greatest good and blessedness for us. And that's the world we are given in the book of Revelation, where it is written again that he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. That's the world it's supposed to be. Death entered the world because of sin. This, though, would not stop our loving God, for he would enter our world in Jesus and take the punishment for sin himself by dying on the cross. And our victory and new life is proclaimed this day. As Jesus was not confined to that tomb, he walked out of it. He rose from the dead, declaring victory over sin and over death. His victory has given the name Jesus, the name we call upon for our salvation. For Jesus is the Son of God, who is the firstborn of the resurrection. So if Jesus has been raised from the dead, what does that mean for us? 
That means we who die will rise from the dead as well. Paul says it this way, But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all be, will be made alive, but each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits. Then it is coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is expected who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then this on himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. There is hope because the one we put our trust in is risen. Therefore, we too rise. We too have victory over death. This victory is declared as the feast of well-aged wine, the feast we know Christ Jesus instituted for his disciples, the feast we call the Lord's Supper, the feast that is the body and blood of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins, the feast that gives us new life here and now through faith by God. For our faith clings to the word, knowing that in this sacrament our sins are forgiven. And this communion that we call it is with us, but it is also with the saints who sleep and are in glory. Hence we hear in our communion preface every week, therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying that we believe that the angels and those who have gone before us commune with us at our altar, for we are the body of Christ gathered at the feast. So just as the nations came to be fed in Egypt by Joseph, so the nations come today in a world filled with evil and darkness. They come to receive new life in the death and resurrection of Christ. They come and in faith receive the body and blood, participating in the feast until the Lord returns. For at this altar, those who receive declare the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes. For in this supper is where God Christ promises to be. And it is through his word and these means of grace Jesus truly gives new life. He gives us a life that can have peace and comfort for our souls. He gives us a life that never ends because he is the resurrection and the life. And so we enter into the festival proclaiming the resurrected king. We read in Isaiah, It'll be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. See, we have new life on account of the resurrected Christ. And so we wait in the festival of victory. We call her the church. As we gather around God's word and sacrament, we wait for the time when death will be wiped away. We wait for the time when we will receive the full crown of new life. And today, we have victory. So when Jesus returns, it will truly be a year of jubilee, where the saints of God will rejoice, and you will receive the crown of life, won for you in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Hence, Joseph foreshadowed Christ. Not that he was Christ, but served as a type for our certainty to know, yes, Jesus died for your sin and rose from the dead, giving you new life. And today is a day of celebration as we celebrate our victory.
from sin and death. Hence we end our sermon with our shouts of praise. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with the confession of the Nicene Creed. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God. He will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I will be the holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this time, we turn to our Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you keep your promise and deliver it up your own Son to be our Savior. By his sacrificial death, our sins are forgiven, and by his rising again, we have the hope of everlasting life. Keep us in this holy joy throughout the Easter season, in all our daily lives, that we may not fear our enemies, nor give in to the temptation of despair in our days of trouble. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us hold fast to the word preached to us, that receiving it with joy, we may take our stand in it and be saved by it. Hinder all who would sow doubt into our hearts and grant us courage to confess its truth in our life and conversation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless Joseph, our president, and all who make and administer our laws. Frustrate the forces of evil, and do not let our leaders cooperate with them or further their goals. Guard our armed forces as they stand watch for us at home and abroad. Let them serve with honor and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Have mercy on the sick and those in any need, especially those in our congregation. For Denise, Carolyn, Mel and Marilyn, Kathy, Carol, Riney and Marilyn, Bill, Joe, Betty, Jerry. Betty, Jean, Gail, Craig, Ethan, Craig, Leona, Shirley, Bonnie, Allison, Sue, Marina, Mark, Aaron, Danielle, Robert, Eleanor, Henry, Kay, Jim, Margie, and Bill. Let the dawning light of the new creation in Christ sustain them in faith and accord with your will. Grant them renewed health, a foretaste of their eternal healing in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise your holy name, O Lord, for all your servants who have departed this life in faith. 
We pray that you will not abandon us to Sheol, but that when we awaken the resurrection of all flesh, your presence will give us joy. Lord, in your mercy. We join today in singing eternal alleluias with innumerable angels in festal gatherings with the assembly of the firstborn and rolled in heaven and with the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And we bring these petitions before you, dear Father, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated at this time. We will collect our offering. Continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially, we are bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored us to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, 
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we have received the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one in God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear the words of your Lord and Savior, that our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We take a moment to greet one another with the peace of the Lord.
Please rise as we continue with the Nuke the Minutes.